This week we take the real hazardous out for some kingfish. Captain Jeremy isn't able to join us today, so I'm in charge. So we started today going out to the St. John's River. Uh, captain Jeremy was working, um, but JJ, the captain, our Uncle Larry and myself took the boat out. Took a right turn going south down the jetties looking for some pogies. We found the pogies pretty quick. It only took about two casts. The second cast, my dad hit the pogie pod about dead on and that got us all the pogies that we were gonna need for the day. Eventually we're gonna do some king fishing, but we wanted to start off with some bottom fishing about 10 miles out, um, trying to get some food on the table. Then we spent uh, maybe an hour and a half or so about 10 miles offshore at some of our uh, secret holes, trying to get some sea bass and some grouper. Unfortunately, we didn't have very much luck. The only thing we seemed to be able to find were those endangered red snapper that the government keeps saying are like threatened and you can't find them anywhere. But for some reason, that was the only thing we could bring in. Weird. So we got four, five, six, I don't remember how many, pretty nice red snapper and uh, after only being able to catch red snapper, um, we decided we are going to cut our losses and go ahead and go for kingfish. We heard on the radio that the kingfish bite was on at the southeast hole, and that wasn't too terribly far from where we were at. Uh, we got there at about 10.30. The bite was on early that morning, and so as we were getting there, the radio chatter was starting to kind of talk like the bite had settled down. We started setting up the lines and getting our spread going, and we had a couple of hits pretty quick. Um, we had a hammerhead shark or more, you know, no kings, but we were at least able to reel some stuff in. But the thing was, and I guess this is the one downside to having one of the fastest boats out there, is with 600 horsepower on the real hazardous, we couldn't get it slow enough to troll these pogies without stressing them out or drowning them. And so we, we were down to one motor, and when we were going with the wind, we were essentially having to put it in gear, pull it out of gear, put it in gear. We had the sea anchors deployed, but even that really wasn't enough. And so the driver really had to be on his toes um, to keep it at the right pace. And when possible, we tried to go against the wind or perpendicular to the wind to offset that effect. Um, so you want to make sure that, because uh, you always want to make sure the boat's not going too fast for your pogies. This is one time it is good to be slow. After about an hour and a half, two hours, a lot of the boats started heading out and I don't know if it was just the fact that there was less traffic or we just found just the right spot, but the kingfish bite picked up. We were getting some hits that are really big fish. Uh, and, um, but they're smart though. One of the things you gotta keep in mind when fishing for kingfish is that you always, and this goes for really any kind of fishing, but you always gotta keep that line under tension. You can't let it slack off the, where the fish can throw the hook. And so when you're trolling, that can be a little challenging because one of the things the big kingfish do, these are the tournament winners, the ones that you wanna get, is they'll come toward the boat. They'll rush basically straight at the fisherman to try and slacken the line. Think of it like in the movie Jaws where the shark goes under the boat. It's a big, smart fish. Same thing with kinks. And so you have to prepare for that. You have to reel really fast because if you don't, they get off. There's two general schools of thought of how to fight kingfish from a boat. There's one style that if you hook up on a kingfish, one person fights the fish and everybody else reels in the other line so that nobody else gets tangled. The guy fighting the fish kind of goes to the bow of the boat and so he fights while one person maybe steers the boat, kind of helps maneuver if need be and another person's the gaff man, if you have a three-man crew. The other method is to let one person fight the fish, one person steers the boat, and then another person just kind of manages the other rods and reels. Um, maybe they reel in a couple, but they leave a few lines out, so maybe we, they get another knockdown. Uh, maybe pick up another king while the one guy's fighting, and so you can get uh, double, triple, quadruple headers. Um, it makes it really chaotic, but it's a lot of fun, too. And each has their advantages and disadvantages. Uh, if you're fishing just for fun and you want to keep the fish that you have, then maybe you get them all in and let the one person focus on that fish. That's 
probably a good idea if it, you have newer fishermen. Um, but in a tournament, if you're fighting on that fish and that fish turns out not to be all that big or not what you thought it was, it's kind of wasted time because you didn't have any other lines in. And so a lot of tournament people like to leave at least one line in so they can hook up on something else during the tournament, you know, waste as little time as possible. What the trick we had to employ to deal with these smarter kings was to essentially, once we locked up, rather than sending our fish fighter to the front of the boat, we leave him kind of to the back and we keep the boat in gear going forward so that when the fish would rush it, he couldn't gain as much ground and put as much slack on the line. One tip you might consider if you're getting consistent hits by big fish, but they seem to just rush you quicker than you can reel in the line. Uh, we were leaving all the lines out, so obviously there are risks involved in that. You, you're dancing over and under different lines, trying to make sure your line with the fish doesn't get tangled with all the others. Uh, and we were running downriggers and outriggers, and so it gets a little chaotic. You definitely have to have somebody on their toes and managing those lines. But we did the best we could, and we, like I said, we did land one that was in the 20s. Um, we lost a couple of good ones, but we found a good area that's been consistently producing hits. 